Welcome, this is Glasgow Rangers Nation. I am Aaron James and this is your Rangers News Channel, guys. And even more importantly today, it is your match day news as Rangers prepare to take on Ross County at Hamden Park this afternoon, three o'clock kickoff, when God intended football to be played. If you want to find out a little bit about our opponents, then check out last night's podcast where I talked to Ross from County Corner, uh, who is obviously an ardent Ross County fan, filled us in on all the details about our opponents. Uh, give us a great insight into Ross County actually it was a great uh, a great pod talking to him last night uh, well we're going to talk a little bit in this uh, episode today this podcast today this video today about Ben Davis about Lewis Travis um, about uh, the game today obviously um, but we're going to start with the news about Ben Davis Davis. Now, Ben Davis, obviously, you know, Rangers central defender, uh, still under contract to the club and one of those higher wage earners, you know, one of those players that, you know, according to reports was identified as being one of those five that, uh, you know, that the club were quite happy to let go before the transfer window closed. Uh, reason for that? Well, you know, £27,000 a week. And I'll be honest with you, he's never really settled in uh, to Scottish football. He's always kind of struggled, hasn't he, with, you know, the expectations in the game. He struggled with the physicality. He struggled with the uh, heading of the ball. Um, you know, he, he really has not suited Scottish football at all. I mean, in total, uh, you know, the guy has made 56 appearances for Rangers. He has scored one goal. Um when he joined, obviously, in 2022-2023 from Liverpool. Um, you know, he certainly came with very, very high expectations. Um, he signed on that four-year contract for an undisclosed fee. Uh, apparently, initially thought to be three million, rising to four million with add-ons. Now, Birmingham City of League One, a team we played in pre-season, who have been splashing the cash this summer. Um, I was talking to a mate of mine who's a Birmingham fan, and he said that uh, this would be their thirteenth summer signing. Uh, certainly, putting the number of uh, signings that we've made to shame but uh, Birmingham City do have a very wealthy owner um, and very wealthy backers as well including former NFL quarterback of the New England Patriots Tom Brady can't stand the guy can't stand the guy as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan cannot stand Tom Brady um, anyway having said that um, according to reports um, Ben Davis will join Birmingham on an initial loan with an option to buy um, this move is very close to being fan finalised. Now, Chris Jack from Rangers Review, the man who usually pisses on your cornflakes when you think someone's going something something good's going to happen, he'll come in and ruin it for you. He put this out last night. Ben Davis will join Birmingham City on loan onto the end of the season. Uh, we do understand that he's also with an option to buy. Uh, he put in the quote that came out of Philippe Clement earlier today: uh, "If people leave, we need other people in. It's clear. Uh, this is thought to be the reason." Reason why Rangers did bid for that Brazilian centre back, whose name I find very hard to pronounce, from Al Maria. Uh, but you know, Davis will certainly go with our best wishes. You know, it hasn't worked out from here at Rangers. You know, I think he, he's a player that's always gave of his best, but just you know, technically um, and you know, physically has, has not been up to the task of playing for, for Rangers. You know, that's not down to I don't think to a lack of effort by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think you can accuse him of not trying. Um, I think you know, it's just the fact that he has not made that transition to the Scottish game has not coped with playing for Rangers uh, so you know that's just what it is guys and we, we wish him all the best you know on this loan move and we certainly hope that it works out for him because if it works out for him then it works out for Rangers because you know Birmingham will then be probably promoted back to the championship which probably will increase the fee we can get for the player unless of course one has already been agreed between the two clubs now the mystery around Black from our current Blackburn Rovers captain who is apparently was out of favour, but is back in favour, but is apparently allegedly able to leave the club this summer, uh, Lewis Travis. Um, there's been an awful lot going around about him today. Now, first of all, there was reports in a number of sources saying that he'd had a tour of Ockenhowie with Craig Robertson, um, ahead of a move to Rangers. Others alleged that this was part of a swap deal for Rabi Matondo, uh, knowing that John Eustace had already said that Blackburn were interested in signing Rabi Matondo. Um, some have said that there was no tour and he was not in Glasgow today and he was actually still at Blackburn, training with Blackburn Rovers. There's been a whole host of different stories uh, surrounding 
the man himself. Now, we'll look at the man himself in a moment and a few details on him and try and find out a little bit more information about this player. Uh, but, um, you know, he has been obviously the subject of a number of stories. Um, Derek Ferguson, uh, former Rangers player, has been speaking exclusively to Ibrox News um, and said, if he's been spotted, I think there's been a few players spotted up in Glasgow so far. It's the way it's been over the last two through three weeks. There's been a lot of speculation about players. And Ferguson's right, you know, there has been an awful lot of uh, rumours suddenly starting back up again. You know, it sort of went quiet, didn't it, for a while? And nobody seemed to know anything. There seemed to be no links, no prospective incomings. And now it's all just taken off just recently with Picardo, Gouveia, uh, Neto, uh, now Jones, um, you know, Kamara, just a whole host of different players and stories of exits and just lots and lots going round. Uh, Ferguson wanted to say what is clear is that Rangers need players in as soon as possible. This this transfer window, we've got a week to go and it's clear it's not rocket science. Well, I think he's right about that. It is pure rockets, purely not rocket science that we need to get more players in, uh, that we need to improve the squad, that we need to obviously continue this rebuild and give Philippe Clement the tools he needs to do the job. Um but as we know, that all depends on us selling players, hence obviously the Ben Davis deal. Also rumours, of course, about Cantwell and so many other players on their way out. Uh, Ferguson went on to say this. He said, Rangers are lacking in quality all over the park and in that squad. So if that's the case, um, Travis has visited, it's music to my ears because it's clear to see they need players in. They need more competition. So that's a good sign if he's been spotted at the training ground. So it certainly seems that Derek Ferguson is very much pro this move for Lewis Travis from Blackburn Rovers. I think Ferguson, you know, just really echoing what Ali McCoyst has said, what Charlie Miller has said, what a number of ex-players, including Alan Hutton as well, have said that, you know, this current squad, this current Rangers squad lacks quality in a number of different positions. And, you know, people can say, well, you, there you are, been negative again, Owen. But no, I'm not. I'm just reporting what has been said by ex-players and also other podcasts. You know, Stevie Clifford, Rangers Review as well, saying on Friday morning, you know, they say that we still need a good three to four players in. You know, Hart and Hand saying the same thing. Club at 22 saying the same thing. Um, it's interesting how they don't get the same levels of abuse as I get. Maybe because I'm English. I don't know. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he's right. We, we do lack a lot of quality. There are a number of positions, you know, that, that we are very short on. I, mean, I think we do need a number 10. We do need a number six. We do need a left winger. Or until Cortez is fully fit, we need a right back. There's a number of positions we need to fill. And obviously, if Ben Davis exits the club, we need a centre back. So there's still a lot of, you know, buys to do. Now, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about this player, Lewis Travis, who, again, this is a link that seems to have come out of nowhere. You know, the talk recently was of that uh, Martin Neto from Benfica. He's a defensive midfielder. There was, and we know that Rangers are looking at a six, a defensive midfielder. We know this is a, you know, something that has been, you know, constantly visited and revisited during the window with the links to the likes of Damian Garcia, Kenny McLean, uh, just to name but two. Now, in terms of Lewis Travis, he's 26 years old, uh, born in October 1997, so he'll be 27 this season. So not, you know, vastly old, vastly, you know, over the hill. He's still got, you know, a good few years left uh, in his legs. Um, he is also, you know, a player with good experience, a player who has played a number of games in, in the English Championship, and... Um, a player who, you know, has leadership qualities, which is, you know, what Rangers are sadly lacking, I think, in a number of positions on this field. Uh, Whiston, born in Whiston, he's 1.83 metres tall, so just over six foot. He's a defensive midfielder. He's under contract until 2026. Uh, there will obviously be some money there. So it's, you know, like I said, there's two stories doing the rounds. One is that we're signing him. The other one is that it's a swap deal for Matondo. I don't know. I haven't really heard yet. I'm not, I mean, sources aren't reporting this. I'm just basically going off what I've read, what I've heard. Um, you know, in terms of his, his his club experience, he's played over 200 club games for Blackburn Rovers, including six goals and 11 assists, which, you know, being a defensive midfielder, he's not going to get the goals and assists. He played 49 times for Blackburn under 21s. He also played nine times for Ipswich last season um, on loan. He was part of the Ipswich squad that were promoted to the Premier League, I mean, which is you know pretty good considering the Ipswich were a team that came from League One. And what is encouraging is Ipswich as a team, if you saw any of their football last season, were a team that got the ball down, played football, were aggressive, moved it forward quickly, you know, 
we're di- not like direct as in long ball, but you know we're, we're not a team that fannied around with the ball, that messed around with the ball, that they got the ball forward, they played the ball forward, they were positive with their passing and very attacking minded. And you know, obviously Travis, as this six, was part of that process. Um, he's played over two hundred championship games. He's also played forty nine Premier League two games, twelve FA Cup games, eleven EFL Cup games, five League One games, two EFL Trophy, and one FA Youth Cup um, game in his career. So this is a player with a vast CV of experience. Now, I know what the concern is amongst Rangers fans. The concern is, of course, that he's a player from the championship and we've been stung in the past by championship players. You know, the the phrase championship duffer is something that has been bandied around Ibrox on a number of occasions by Rangers fans. You know, obviously players like Kieran Dahl, who's never really lived up to his promise because of his injuries. Uh, Tom Lawrence, who, you know, is struggling at this moment in time. Um you know, those sort of players that have kind of, you know, emphasized Ben Davis have kind of emphasized that a little bit. But Travis is not that type of player for me. Travis is, is a successful player. He's a leader. He's a good player. He's physical. He's strong. He's quick. He's, you know, he's a decent player. Yes, he's not, you know, top, top class, but that is not the market we're shopping in at the moment. We can't afford those players that you would describe as top, top class. You know, we haven't got 10, 15, 20 million pounds to spend on players. You know, that is where the budget is. And that's where we're at this moment in time. And, you know, whether we, we like the signing of Lewis Travis or we don't like the signing of Lewis Travis and whether it even happens or not you know i think we've got to accept that if this is what Niels coppen and philippe clermont have targeted and then said that this is the player for them then we've got to back them to do the job back them to get the players in they want and back them to to turn this round you know that is what we need to do as fans to back the manager back the director of recruitment you know as as john caveat bennett said the other day um you know and a number of fans have also echoed this a number of podcasts have echoed this we can't go through a rinse repeat cycle of constantly sacking managers and constantly having rebuilds or else we're just going to end up in either di- more dire financial situation and even further behind our neighbours from across the city. Now, in terms of Travis, he, he is probably, like I said, a defensive midfielder, but he has been known to play right back and right midfield as well. Um, useful, interesting, uh, certain for his positioning. In terms of Travis's transfers, he, he began with Liverpool under 18s. So he was was Liverpool from a very young age. I think he was about seven. Uh, came through their youth system before moving to Blackburn in 2015-2016. Um, then graduated to the first team in 2018-2019. Was loaned to Ipswich in 23-24 and then came back to Blackburn. Uh, so he is a Blackburn player, uh, even though Ipswich uh, had him on loan last season. So, look, you know, he's only had the two clubs, you know, both decent clubs in England, you know, both well-respected clubs, you know, yes, not the biggest clubs in, in, in England by any stretch of the imagination in terms of crowd, but certainly clubs with a proud history, clubs with a proud tradition, clubs that play good football um, as well, you know, and yes, they are championship clubs, but I would argue the standard of a lot of the championship teams is better than the standard of a lot of the uh, of the the SPL teams. I would argue that, you know, your top half of the championship would probably finish a minimum of a third in the, in the SPL behind the old firm. I don't think for a minute that there that all the championship teams will be able to compete with the old firm uh, i do think the big spending ones obviously the, the parachute payment ones down from the premier league would be able to but certainly you know the others would find it find it tricky so there is a, stand, a decent standard in the efl championship these days there is you know good players there to be found and you know players that yes that parts of the market we're not shopping in but you've got players going up to the premier league from the championship for in the region of 20 25 30 million pounds at the moment so you know they're not all bad players they're not all duffers as has as some of them have been described in the past i think you know we have to have faith in niels cop and faith in philippe clement and faith that this player if he signs could be the right man for the job look all, all i really want to see now is, as we move towards the last week of the window you know Let's remember this time next week, the window will be closed. All this speculation will be done and dusted. And some of you will go, yay, thank God. But, you know, whatever we're sat with at this time next week, you know, we will have to play with. That will be it until January. You know, there will be no movement. There'll be no extra players. That is it. That is what we're getting. So, guys, you know, like I said, you know, let me know what you think down in the 
comments. Uh, Rangers meet Ross County at Hamden Park and hopefully what is going to be our last game at Hamden Park. Hopefully a return to our home Ibrox will be be the, uh, the the location for our next home game. Now, if you remember last season, uh, Rangers played Ross County on three occasions, obviously with the split. Ross County were in the lower half, finishing in the playoff position and overcoming, I think it was Wraith Rovers, to survive in the SPL. Uh, last year, we beat them 2-0 in our first game against them at uh, at Ross County in Dingwall. Uh, goals, I think it was Kemal Roof and James Tavernier. Uh, Roof from close in and James Tavernier from long distance. Uh, then there was a 3-1 win at Ibrox. Um, two of the goals then came from Cyril Dessers. The other one, Raskin, possibly. Uh, I might be wrong on that one. Uh, and then there was that quite incredible game on the 14th of April that we talked about on the podcast last night where Ross County beat Rangers for the first time ever in their history, 3-2. Um, a game where we were effectively had our title aspirations ended. Um, you know, Ross County, in terms of, of a team, you know, they're a, a spirited team, a hard-fighting team, a team with a bit, you know, a bit of gumption, a bit of a... You know that Don Cowie sends out there to, to have it have a fighter and not actually just give up uh, and not actually just low block all the time. You know they're a team that will have a go when they think it's right, but they're not a team that are going to go out gung ho because they realise go out gung ho against Rangers, you'll get picked off and you'll get beaten. Now in terms of the team tomorrow, I, I put two down. I put what I think the manager will do and what I would like to do. So for me, I would like to go with this team: Jack Butland in goal. Dijon Sterling at right back. I want to see Sterling play at right back because I want to see Sterling at right back in the old firm game. Uh, Suter and Balligan, as we know, proper is not available. And Hefte as left back. You know, realistically, you know, Ben Davis is moving on. Uh, no disrespect to Leon King, but, you know, Suter and Balligan without proper around are our first choice. Um, Hefte will start on the left side, I think. Um, he won't play Hefte and Fraser in the same team. I think he won't want to play both left backs and risk injury. Um, I'd like to see Bailey Rice given a run out. I really would. You know, look, as I've said on many occasions, no disrespect to Ross County, but this is not one of the, the tricky teams in Scotland to play. This is not Celtic. This is not, you know, Patodri. This is not a Europa League game. This is this is a game at home, well, at home in inverted commas. Um, you know, let's give him a run out, play him alongside Connor Barron and push Modi and Mande further forward or go 4-3-3, play with a fat flat three with Barron and Rice either side of Dio. I'd like to see Ross McCausland and Cheney take up the wing positions. You know, Ross took his goal really well last week. Um, I think he needs a reward for that. I've gone with Danilo for two reasons. One, because he needs more minutes. Uh, even if we only get 45, 50 minutes an hour out of him, we need to give him a bit more of a run out. We need to give him some match sharpness. And it is Ross County after all. You know, Dessers, look, whatever you think about Serial Dessers, you cannot play him for every single game and flog the guy to death. Or, you know, when it comes down to when it actually matters, when we play in those games in, in the Europa League or get that next week against Celtic, you know, when we perhaps need him on the park, he's going to be tired. He's going to be physically shattered. We can't keep flogging these players to death. Um, you know, yes, the squad depth doesn't help at this moment in time. And yes, I would love to get into the number nine in, but don't think it'll happen. Dino Dino needs minutes. It's Ross County. It's not Hearts. It's not Aberdeen. It's not Celtic. For me, given the minutes, we can always bring Dessers on in the second half, like we did against uh, St. Johnston. I think the manager, though, will go with a completely different team. I think the manager will go Butland. I think he'll play Tav at right back. Um, you know, he'll play Suter, Balligan and Hefte. Baron and Dio, he'll put Tom Lawrence in the 10 role, even though I think a lot of fans now are reaching the point where they're kind of losing the will to live with Tom Lawrence. Cheney and McCausland, I think he'll go with. I think you know, if Matondo doesn't play tomorrow, I think that's a clear signal that he is on his way out. And I think he'll go with Serial Dessers up top. Well, that is the two teams. That's the team I think against a team I think Philippe Clermont will pick. But then again, look, who knows? Philippe Clermont's team selections are notoriously hard to pick. Well, guys, let me know what you think of the stories that we've covered in this video today. Uh, thank you always for watching, guys. Your support is absolutely a a, is just fantastic. And uh, you know what? It's just brilliant. Um, I get, I understand that not everyone likes the channel. I get that I understand that everyone doesn't like me. Um, I just want to address one thing, though, before I go today. I was watching... Um, I rewatched Rangers Radio last night um, after it was pointed out by a couple of fans to rewatch it and channels were being discussed. Uh, I'm not going to name the person um, 
involved in this. But uh, I'm just going to say I was absolutely disgusted to read a comment by one of the commenters on the video who stated that they would like James Tavernier or Cyril Dessas to punch me in the face. Um, I, I genuinely don't understand why anyone would wish violence against another person. Why at any point where someone would, you know, have um, a strong desire to watch someone get physically assaulted. Um, I think those remarks are absolutely bang out of order. Um, I think those remarks are absolutely disgraceful. Um, and, you know, as a dad of two, if I heard my daughters talking like that, I would take them to task over that uh, sort of behavior. Um, that person knows who they are. I hope they're thoroughly ashamed of what they've said. Um, like I said, I would never, ever wish violence on anyone, no matter what they said about me. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching um, Glasgow Rangers Nation. Please remember always, we are the people. <laughs>